All right. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy New Moon. Happy New Moon. Happy Sabbath. Happy New Moon. So uh, let's go to Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha, 33. And we'll, we'll start about the 7th verse. the ninth verse and then we'll get into the topic pertaining to the bride of Christ and the vision that was given unto Ezra the prophet we'll go into each these scriptures pertaining to God's high holy days so Ecclesiasticus 33 and 7 Right. It says, why doth one day excel another? So why does one day excel or is above another day? When as all the light of every day in the year is of the sun. Right. So the, the sun shines on every day. But the question is being posed to Israel. Why is one day more excellent than another day? Or is why is a day above another day by the knowledge of the Lord so that's the answer by the knowledge of the Lord that's what we're dealing with God's knowledge say by the knowledge of the Lord they were distinguished they meaning days were distinguished so it's the Lord who bring in days and distinguish days right through his knowledge where can we find the knowledge of God at? In this Bible. His word. Okay. So by the knowledge of the Lord, they were distinguished. And he altered seasons. And he altered. The word altered means to change. He altered seasons. And feasts. And feasts. Mean feast days. You see, by his knowledge, he gives us his feast days. He gives us his, the seasons. Understand? There's no such thing as Mother Nature. So when we talk about Mother Nature, when you hear our people saying that, that's because they caught up in the midst of idolatry. Okay, there is no Mother Nature being mean and bringing in mean seasons, the rain changing the weather, and all this other foolishness. No Mother Nature, Mother Nature, causing hurricanes. Okay. Lord, you bringing them them hurricanes, monsoons, tsunamis, and through spirits. Okay, so let's read. Some of them have He made high days. See, some of the days have He, the Most High, made high days, and hallowed them, and hallowed these days, these high holy days. These excellent days. And some of them have he made ordinary days. And some of the days have the Lord just made ordinary days. You understand? So it's the Lord that gives us high holy days through his knowledge. So some of the God's high holy days will be what? The Sabbath. It's just today. We come together, that is a commandment. We fellowship in the spirit of the Most High in Christ. Okay, you got Passover, Pentecost, the new moon, Easter Tabernacles, right? These are all the high holy days of God, Purim, Easter Simons, and then you got ordinary days. Just regular days. So in God's eyes, there's only two type of days, right? Right. High holy days and ordinary days. Now, did the Lord ever give us 4th of July? No. Named after the month is named after a Edomite, Julius Caesar. The Lord gave us a, a, a 4th of July where we pop fireworks and, and act a fool. 
Nope. The Lord give us Halloween, Christmas, Thanksgiving, nope. New Year's. He didn't give us none of that. So why would we want to follow it? There go idolatry again and lust. Lord didn't give us Easter. You see? As to a false god or goddess, Ishtar. You see? So it's only two type of days, Israel. High holy days in God's eyes and ordinary days. So did the Lord tell us to celebrate our birthday? No. 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 There's more idolatry. So would God change his high holy days where is he would abolish his high holy days? Because if so, then this scripture is done away with. Right or wrong? Right. See? And when Christ came on the earth under the Roman Empire, the fourth kingdom, was the Sabbath still around? Yes. Passover, tabernacles. After Christ's death, resurrection, ascension, was Pentecost, the Sabbath, and all that, Passover still being kept? Because right. hmm? yes, that means this scripture ain't going nowhere. Mm -hmm. So what about Isaiah 66? Let's get it. You see, so that's just how basic and simple it is. That's wrong. Let this world dictate your thoughts when it comes to God's word. This, this world is antichrist it's against the god of jacob the god of israel you see this world will tell you god's uh sabbath day is on so-called sunday that's the first day of the week <laughs> when the lord had already instituted his sabbath through the christ when in the beginning at the end of creation that's before sin even entered the world. So it go to show you that the, the God's Sabbath days will always be to be kept eternally. See? This is what Isaiah the prophet is saying, Israel. Isaiah 66. See, so we're not to look at God's high holy days and Sabbath as something light and we just do what we want to do, how we want to keep them. That's not how the God of Israel works. <laughs> Christ said he the Lord of the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. He said the Sabbath was made for man. So what was Christ at on the Sabbath? Did he keep it? Yes. That's right. See? He taught on it as well. That's right. He's our example. So this Isaiah 66 and 22. This is our future right here, Israel. For as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make shall remain before me. So the Lord is talking about a kingdom to come. That's the new heaven and new earth that's going to be right here on earth. And it's going to be an eternal kingdom. It's going to remain forever. So just as the, the kingdom is going to be eternal before the Lord. So shall your seed. And your name remain. So shall your seed and your name remain. So it's speaking about the elect of Israel. God's chosen people that elect going to always be around eternally. In this kingdom. That the Lord going to usher in at Christ's second coming. That's the day we all should be looking forward to. We to look forward to the reward of the kingdom. The promise of immortality to come. You see? And if we're doing that, we're going to work out our salvation with what? Fear, Fear and trembling. You're going to take things light. <laughs> you see? It'll like to come and go as they please. That ain't that ain't how we're supposed to be dealing with it. We got to get in that seed and sower. Mm -hmm. You be saying Israel come and then <clears throat> draw back mm -hmm. unto perdition. What's the perdition? That's the destruction to come. That fire. Mm -hmm. 
We supposed to be moving forward, not backwards. You see? So it's a kingdom coming, Israel, for that elect. Read on. And it shall come to pass. And it shall come to pass. See, that's how the Most High speak. He's about his prophecies. Say, it's going to happen. It's coming. <laughs> you see, the Lord be knowing what's going down. How it's going to go down. When it's going to go down. The Lord know the past. You understand? He know what he talking about. So we got to get down with the Lord. You know what I mean? So it's just like you and me, brother, being around, let's say, 1990 and fellowshipping and then things go down and we were there and seen it. People leave. And you got new people coming in. They don't know what happened in 1990 all that. So it take us to say this how it went down, right? Say, oh, we didn't know that. That's how the Lord did. He, I'll tell you, Israel, what's going to happen. He knows already. Hmm. He'll prophesy to and tell us what's going to happen. We just got to say, you know what? This going to happen. You said it, Lord. That's what he's doing. It shall come to pass. That, that what? That from one new moon to another. That from one new moon to another new moon. See, this this all kingdom. So it's showing you that the new moon under the new covenant mm -hmm. would always be kept eternally. From one new moon to another, me another new moon. And from one Sabbath. And from one Sabbath. To another. To another Sabbath. Shall all flesh. Shall all flesh. Come to worship before me, saith the Lord. Y'all checking that out? So God's new moons, feasts, Sabbaths are eternally. And they are days of what? They're days of worship, Israel. And Christ, the Lord said, shall all flesh come to worship me. That's even the nation that be in the kingdom. They're going to have to keep God's Sabbaths. And new moons and all that, see? So does this scripture here, this prophecy go with it? Ecclesiastes 33, yeah, right. 7 through 9. See that? You see? So how we look at the Sabbaths and treat the Sabbath, that's the way we'll look at the kingdom of heaven. Because the kingdom of heaven is a reflection of the Sabbath. It's just an eternal rest. Right? Forever for Israel. Now, let's go to Revelation. Our praises. Revelation 21. So the topic is the bride of Christ and the vision of Ezra. The prophet. Okay. So this Revelation 21 and 9. We're going to come to find out that all nations on the planet Earth does not make up the bride of Christ. Mm. We got to say that. A lot of our people think that Christ died for the whole wide world. Mm. All nations. That's not true. They did, did. John 3.16 is being spun and taken out of context. So when they see the word world in there, they're thinking, World, whole wide world. You got the animal world, sea world, right. Disney world, mm. right? <laughs> the wide world of sports. <laughs> you got to know what we're talking about. Christ died for Israel because Israel broke the first covenant. Now, who would the new covenant be made with? Same people. The same, same people. people. The first That's right. 
So Christ said when he would die for the remission of sins, he will usher in and establish the new covenant. For who? Israel. 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 That's it. That's all in the Bible. So let's get into the bride. Mm -hmm. Revelation 21 and 9. And they came unto me. The me is the apostle John. One of the seven angels which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues. Which make up the wrath of God. And talk with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. See, so this angel here is telling John, I'll show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. So let's hold this. Let's get who the Lamb is. Let's go to St. John 1. Mm. Let's get who the lamb is. St. John 1, 35. Right. So this is John the Baptist, a great prophet in Israel who came in the spirit and power of Elijah. He was not Elijah reincarnated. Okay. Gabriel said that John the Baptist would come in the spirit and power of Elijah. John chapter 1 verse 35. Again, the next day after John stood and two of his disciples. So here's John the Baptist. He's standing with two of his disciples, right? And looking upon Jesus. Who did he look upon? And looking upon Jesus. So he was looking upon, staring at Yahweh, Jesus of Nazareth. As he walked, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. You see that? So as Christ walking, John the Baptist looking at him, what did he say in the ears of two of his disciples? Behold, the Lamb of God. So who is the Lamb of God? Jesus Christ. Is that's that's clear enough? That's transparent. <laughs> Cause this Lamb of God, which is the Christ, would die for Israel. He would be the our Passover Lamb. You see? He said, Behold, the Lamb of God. Read on. And the two disciples heard him speak. And they followed Yahweh. You see, so these two disciples heard what John the Baptist said, and they started following Christ, the Lamb of God. So now let's let John the Baptist also tell us who the bridegroom is and the bride. Because John the Baptist was a powerful, powerful teacher, speaker, prophet that was sent by the Most High. So don't tell us John the Baptist fell out the truth. Got to repent, Israel, in these devil doctrines. Got to quit speaking evil. So John 3, 22. So we got the lamb. Let's start working our way into the bride and the bridegroom, right? It says, after these things came the Haushai and his disciples into the land of Judea. So now we got the location where Christ and his disciples is at. They in the land of Judea. Who lives there? Israel. Israel. Read on. And there and there in the land of Judea he tarried with them. He tarried Christ tarried with his disciples and baptized. And baptized. So you had Christ's disciples baptizing many Israelites in the land of Judea in water. Christ's job or office was to baptize Israel with the Holy Spirit. But he was there amongst his disciples watching them baptize many Israelites in water. That's what's being said. Read on. It says, and John also. And John the Baptist also, just like the disciples is doing with Christ amongst them was baptizing 
in Anan near to Salem. Mm -hmm. Because there was much water there. So was Israel getting baptized in water by Christ's disciples, John the Baptist? Yes. Exactly. Yes. See, read on. It says, and they came and were baptized. For John was not yet cast into prison. Uh huh. Then there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purity. So now you got some of John's disciples and many Israelites got a question about purifying, many cleansing. See? Read on. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi. So they coming to John the Baptist. They call him Rabbi because John the Baptist was a teacher. He that was with thee beyond Jordan. Who was the he that was with John the Baptist beyond Jordan? Who was that? He that was with thee beyond Jordan. Christ. Right. Because did John the Baptist baptize Christ in water? Yeah. Yeah. So he that is with thee beyond Jordan. To whom thou bearest witness. To whom you bearest witness you spoke of. Behold. Behold. The same baptized. The same brothers baptized. So again, did Christ baptize in water? No. No. His disciples was doing that. But they recognized, wait, this brother is down with that. But what they're doing. The same baptizeth. And all men come to him. And all men come to him. Meaning you had Edomites, Hamites, Canaanites, were they all coming to Christ to get baptized in water with his disciples? No. So who was the all men that was coming to the Christ Israel. to get baptized? Right? Israel, right? Read on. John answered and said, a man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Mm -hmm. You yourselves bear me witness that I said I am not the Christ, but that I am sent before him. Because John the Baptist was the forerunner of Christ. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom. So check out what John the Baptist is saying. He that hath the bride is the who? Bridegroom. So who is the bridegroom that John the Baptist is talking about? Christ the house. Right. Who's coming to the Christ to get baptized? The bride. Who is that? Israel. There you go. You understand? So <laughs> Israel that will come to Christ and endure will make up his bride. You can't just... All, the, all nations... That's why, if you know the third chapter of John, and 14, 15, 16, and he would die for the world, this is Israel. And he's talking to an Israelite in this chapter. This is what Christ would be talking to. Him. Nicodemus, a Pharisee, a ruler of the Jews. And in the chapter, who's coming to get baptized? Israel. Dealing with Christ and his disciples because Christ is the bridegroom and you got your bride right there. John the Apostle is telling us how everything went down after the fact. You see? Because he was what, Lufil? Apostle John was the, what? He was there. You see? <laughs> He has the Holy Spirit. So now we hear an account from John the Baptist right here about who the bridegroom and the bride is. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom. This is what John the Baptist is telling Israel. Read on. But the friend of the bridegroom which standeth and hear of him rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. So who would be the friend of the bridegroom? That would hear Christ's voice. John. Who? John the Baptist. John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. He was happy. 
to deal with the Christ. Remember he baptized him? So he's a friend mm. of Jesus Christ. He would never be an enemy right. of Christ. <laughs> you see? When he was in the womb, he leaped when he heard about the Christ right. that would come on the uh, earth. You see? Read on. It says, this my joy therefore is fulfilled. See, this my joy therefore is fulfilled. So John the Baptist was happy. When many Israelites was coming to who? Christ. Christ. He knew that there would be a transition. You see? He would, like he said in the next verse, he must increase, meaning the bridegroom, the Christ. He must increase but I, John the Baptist, must decrease because it'd be a transition. Because eventually John the Baptist would go to prison and Christ would step on the scene and, and teach repentance in Galilee. So this has nothing to do with in the 30th verse. See, water baptism will be done away with. That's what John the Baptist is saying. That's what many Israelites teach. That's a lie. So why you go get all the way in the Acts and what was happening? <laughs> Okay. So you got many slick will Israelites out there mm -hmm. tricking our people through the spirit of the devil. You understand? So let's get what Christ himself would call him, himself the bridegroom. Go to Matthew 9. So these nations be trying to trick us, y'all. They can't tell you your book. Nope. You see? How our people listen to Jimmy Olstein and, and, and going to Oral Roberts University to, to learn the Bible. Who are they to teach us the Bible? Hmm. Yeah. See? Come on. Who the Lord say he show his word to? Jacob. The reason why the Lord's prophets were Israelites. <laughs> it's a reason why Jesus Christ, the top prophet, was born an Israelite. Mm. You understand? So it's Matthew 9 uh -huh. and 14. Then came to him the disciples of John. So now you got the disciples of John approaching the Christ. Right along with the disciples of the Pharisees. Many of them came. Saying, why do we and the Pharisees fast off? So this was their question for the Christ. Why do we, John, this, the disciples of John and the disciples of the Pharisees, why do we fast often? Go ahead. It says, but thy disciples fast not. But thy, your disciples, fast not. So hold that. Let's go to Luke 5. We're coming back. What's this fasting about? You got some Israelites say, yeah, I'm going to do a juice fast. <laughs> What's a fast according to the Bible? But it's the same account. Uh, John or Luke, I should say, Luke 5, 33. And they said unto him. And they said unto him. Why do the disciples of John fast often? So who's speaking this to the Christ? Is Christ's disciples asking this question? <laughs> right, John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees asking Christ this question. It says, and make prayers, and likewise the disciples of the Pharisees. You see? But thine eat and drink. So what's fasting? When we're not what? Eating or drink. All right. See what we went here? <laughs> That's what shows us what a fast is. Okay? So now let's go back 
Matthew 9, 14. So we're moving along, all praises, and, and take what the Spirit gives us. It says, then came to him the disciples of John, saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast off, but thy disciples fast not? And Yahweh said unto them. So who's speaking here? Jesus Christ, our Savior. Can the children of the bride chamber. See, can the children, and he threw in that word, bride chamber. So when you deal with the marriages in Israel, to consecrate the marriage, it would be a, 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 a chamber, right? Yeah. Where the physical act will go down amongst the promised husband and wife. That's the consummation. So he said, can the children of the bride chamber? Remember they asked questions about Christ, the followers of Christ. So who would be the children of the bride chamber? That would be the believers, starting with the disciples, right? Can the children of the bride chamber mourn? Mourn, because that's what fasting is. As long as the bridegroom is with them? As long as the bridegroom is with the children of the bride chamber? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken from them, and then shall they fast. But the days, he's prophesying, will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them, and then shall they, what? The children of the bridegroom fast. Christ knew he was going to die, resurrect, and send back to the Father. You read about the believers fasting. Right? So what did Christ call himself? The bridegroom. That's right. <laughs> He's the bridegroom. And we still linking how to who the bride is. Mm. You see? So it gets better. Let's go back to Revelation 21 and 9. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. The bride, the lamb's wife. Read on. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem. Descending out of heaven from God. Right. So now, what is John the Apostle saying? A city descending from heaven, from God. So ask yourself, you think Christ going to marry a city? <laughs> you just got to think. <laughs> you think... This city coming from heaven, that's my wife. I'm going to marry this city. Mm. We're in Revelation. Right? right? So let's read. How did this great city called the Holy Jerusalem descend out from heaven? What did it look like? Read on. Having the glory of God. So it was glorious looking. And her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall great and high, and had 12 gates. So the city had 12 gates. And at the gates, 12 angels, and names written thereon. And names written on these 12 gates. Which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. You see what John is saying? <laughs> it's a city. This is what he's seeing. We're having gates and foundations on the gates. With the names of who? The 12 tribes of Israel. Read on. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. That was all the names of the 12 tribes of Israel on these gates. 
And the wall of the city had 12 foundations. And in them. And in these 12 foundations. The names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. You see? Now, again, the question would be, wow, Christ going to marry a city that come from heaven. Because this has to be the, the Lamb's wife, right? It's Revelation. So let's get Isaiah 62. This city that John the Apostle of Sin didn't get destroyed. It got delivered, taken up, but it would inherit the earth as a kingdom. So Isaiah. Sixty two. And eleven. Behold, the Lord hath proclaimed unto the end of the world. So let's hear the gospel's message. Say ye to the daughter of Zion. Say ye to who? The daughter of Zion. Say ye to the daughter of Zion. Who is the daughter of Zion? That's the elect of Israel. Be Say this message to the elect of Israel. Behold. Thy salvation coming. Behold, O daughter of Zion, your salvation is coming. Who is this salvation that's to come? Read. Behold, his reward is with him. So this salvation is dealing with a his. That's a person. Who is that? That's Christ. He's our salvation. He's the salvation of Israel. The daughter of Zion. Read on. It says, and his work before him, and they shall call them. And they shall call them, the them is the daughter of Zion. The holy people. The holy people. The redeemed of the Lord. So the daughter of Zion would be called what? The holy people and what? The redeemed of the Lord. What else? And thou shalt be called. And thou shalt be called. Sought out. The daughter of Zion should be called sought out. And what else? A city not forsaken. So what's the city? Daughter of Zion. Right. That's the elect of Israel. There go your bride. Right. So the Bible dealt with a lot of symbolism. You see? <laughs> what... what John the Apostle is saying is what Isaiah said. They all go together. This is the prophecy. So the Most High is telling us how it's going to go down. You remember what, what Paul was teaching the Thessalonians, how the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then we which are alive shall meet the Lord in the air? Right. Because Israel got to be delivered from the destruction that's coming on this earth. And upon that deliverance, they'll get the kingdom. That's going to be where? Right here on the earth. New heaven, new earth. That's the kingdom of Israel. That elect under Christ. Those are your saints. Now, jump to the 60th chapter in Isaiah. Read verse 12. The 60th chapter, the 12th verse. It says, For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee. So now the Lord, through Isaiah, is talking about actual Gentiles, the other nations who, who would rule the earth. It's like you have the Babylonians rule, which are Cushites. You had the Persian and Medes who rule. You have the Greeks that will rule the earth, the Edomites. And you have the Romans, the Edomites will rule the earth. So you got the Greco-Roman Empire. That's the empire we under. But these nations, the Lord telling us in the kingdom, they're going to have to serve the elect of Israel. 
And if they don't want to do it, what does it say? For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall what? Perish. So the Lord going to put the nations in subjection to that elect, the daughter of Zion. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. Right? So we didn't write this. These are the Lord's words. You see? So we talking about the daughter of Zion, we talking about the actual nations, the Gentiles, the heathen, right? Right. <laughs> so how are these nations gonna make up the bride of Christ? See so our people into this religion, these religions, they be reading it wrong because they being taught by their oppressor. You see, and we'll and we'll we'll start speaking like our oppressor when it comes to the Bible. Oh, you're extrapolating. What are you talking? Where you learn that word from? <laughs> That's not canon. Canon? Who taught you that word? Go to the apocrypha or the Strong's G. Excuse me. And and look up that word, kudike. See that word here in the Greek mean kudike. Kudike. What type of mind we be having? The mind of Esau. Mm -hmm. Every time. Every time. Following Judaism. Mm -hmm. Zeke Zeke's. Zeke Zeke's. Brother. <laughs> you talking about those things you wear? Zeke Zeke's. Where, where you get that from? When you go to Deuteronomy 22, see, in the Strong's, in the Hebrew, Zeke Zeke's. Stop that. <laughs> That's that Judaism. Israel. See, I know, the, the Apocrypha is not canon, but they'd be the first one to tell you, you need to read the book of Enoch. It's deep. Right to the end. <laughs> but you were against this. That's just a historical stop. Wow. These nations is going into captivity. This is a scripture. This is a future prophecy. Don't tell us when the time when Ezra and them got back to the land after the Babylonian captivity, we had the nations as servants and handmaids. No, we were still under the nations. Because that's when the Persian and Medes ruled. See? So let's read. We have Isaiah 60 and 13. So we got the nations down straight, right? From the 12th verse. It says, The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee. See, the glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee. Now this is talking about Israel. The glory of Lebanon. That was a place. Lebanon was a place in Israel. The fir tree, the pine tree, and the box together. See, the fir tree, the pine tree, and the box, meaning the box tree, together. That's expensive wood. To beautify the place of my sanctuary. And I will make the place of my feet glorious. So it's talking about the kingdom. Lord well, said it's going to be a glorious kingdom. And you have expensive wood, mm. all that there. See, so we know there ain't no wood going to be in the sky. <laughs> Who told us the kingdom going to be in the sky? That go to nations again, tricking us. It is the main ones giving us Santa Claus. Ho, 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 and he come through your chimney, right? Through fire and smoke. Get that stuff out of here. But tell us that ain't witchcraft and idolatry. See? Let's read. It says, the sons also of them that afflicted thee. See, the sons of these nations that afflicted Israel, you know, oppressed us shall come bending unto thee. And all they that despise thee shall All the nations that despise Israel, the daughter of Zion, shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet. This is in the kingdom, not on the streets of Philadelphia. You see Israelites dealing with drug heads. They kiss my boots, see they putting on a show. And then here go the druggie or the heroin addict. 
get on their knees and kiss the booze and Israel glorifying that stuff. But we still See? That too. Yeah. Isaiah talking about the kingdom. Right. Lord going to have these nations of spirit bow down. Context. See? And what are these nations going to say? And they shall call thee the city of the Lord. What are the nations going to call the elect of Israel? The city of the Lord. The Zion of the Holy One of Israel. See? So how can the nations be the bride? Hmm. Who's the city? There you go. We getting it very transparent and clear. Say, wow. The Zion of the Holy One of Israel. See, that's that elect. Not all Israel. That's that elect of the 12 tribes. You see, we make up the city. We have to endure Israel. We are that bride. See how the prophecy going down? We got to see it and be ye thankful. You see that? So let's get Isaiah 54. Isaiah 54 and 6. All praises. For the Lord hath called thee as a woman forsaken and grieving spirit. So remember this, Israel. We are Isaiah 54 and 6. So what would the Lord compare the elect of Israel to? As a woman. A woman what? Uh, as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit. You see? So remember that. And what else would he call that elect of Israel? And a what? It says, and a wife of you. And a wife of you. When thou wast refused, saith thy God. Read on. For a small moment have I forsaken thee. The Lord said, for a small moment have I forsaken thee. Why? Because what would happen to Israel? We would go into captivity, right? right. We're going after other gods. The Lord said, for a small moment I have forsaken thee, Israel. But with great mercy. But with great mercies will I gather thee. Will I gather thee. So what would these great mercies come through? Jesus Christ. Right. He would die for Israel and gather us Spirit. together in one and ultimately deliver us through God's great mercies. But Isaiah knew Israel going, you're going into captivity. You see? You're going, you, you're going to go through a lot of misery and affliction, Israel. Y'all see that? But in Israel, that elect, Christ would marry his bride. That's right. Which would be also called the church. We're going to get those scriptures. Because Christ in the church is compared to marriage. It all going to make sense. We actually get into what the Lord is showing us and telling us. See? So 2 Ezra 7. Now. Remember I said, remember Isaiah 54? Second Ezra 7. 26. So remember in 2nd Ezra 6, the Lord told Ezra how Esau is the end of the world, Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Then Ezra started going into creation, and he, Ezra knew that Israel is the chosen nation. He said, Listen, well, we ain't inherit the earth. So the Lord. We'll be dealing with Ezra on a high level. So then in the seventh chapter, 
the Lord had the angel tell Ezra, look, the world is created for Israel, that elect. But Israel got to go through the straight gate, take the narrow path to get this kingdom, right? And he had to let Ezra know, look, many Israelites, Ezra, don't want to keep my law. Straight commandments. They burdensome to the wicked. See, to the wicked, they're, in each generation, they'll cast the wisdom off. So this is why they got to die. That's what the Lord was telling Ezra. Ezra. So there's no judge above the Most High. <laughs> so therefore, for the wicked, they get come up empty. For the fool, that righteous, that endure, they're going to get the full things. That's the kingdom. So verse 26, 2 Ezra 7, 26 says what? Behold, the time shall come that these tokens which I have told thee shall come to pass, and the bride shall appear. You see that? So the angel telling Ezra, the things I showed you from the Lord going to come to pass, those signs. And a bride shall appear, Ezra, in the end. So would Ezra know about a bride? All right. But we are in the chapter. You already know Israel is getting the kingdom that he left. <laughs> this is your bride. So Ezra would know about the marriage between the lamb and the bride before it actually would take place. And the bride shall appear. And she coming forth shall be seen that now is withdrawn from the earth. See, so the bride that's not seen eventually going to be seen at the end of this. You see? Because to the earth, they see us as the bride. Mm -mm. See us as dirt. But in the end, what did Isaiah say they going to say? This is the, <laughs> this is the city. All right. The city. The they place. look at us as nothing, man. They tell you, Israel. No, we're not. Whatever. Some of us be confused. I'm like, Israel, man. What is going on? <laughs> Should I read the Bible or not? I don't know. <laughs> Let me get into L. Ron Hubbard and Dianetics, Israel, and all these other books. We reading it, Israel. We're reading about our future. You see? So now let's go to Second Ezra 9. Yes, sir. Second Ezra, the ninth chapter, the 23rd verse. Nevertheless, if thou will cease yet seven days more, but shall, but thou shalt not fast in them. Meaning the angel Uriel is telling Ezra, look, you chill seven days more, but don't fast in these days, these seven days. It says, but go into a field of flowers. But Ezra, go into a field of flowers. A field of flowers that's where on earth. Where no house is built. Where no house, Ezra, is built in this field. A house can't be built there. Right? And eat only the flowers of the field. Taste no flesh. Drink no wine, but eat flowers only. So the angel is giving Ezra commandments. This is all coming from the Lord. And pray unto the highest continually. And keep praying to the most high continually, Ezra. Then will I come and talk with you. So the angel, Uriel, said, then after you praying and you in that field for seven days, I'm going to come back and deal with you. Okay. Don't fast in these seven days, Ezra. You see, eat, but you can't eat this food, certain food. You can't drink wine, right? Right. But what type? Let's read on. Because you know Ezra ain't going to eat tulips <laughs> and, and, and roses. Hey, let me chew on a rose. 
So it says, So I went my way into the field which is called Arda, right? like as he commanded me. And there I sat among the flowers and did eat of the herbs of the field. So what was it as we're eating? Herbs. That's right. Edible herbs of the field. Herbs is good. And the meat of the same and satisfied. The, and the food of the same, these same herbs satisfy Ezra. He was straight with that. <laughs> he didn't have to go and get flesh and drink the wine, right? It says, after seven days I sat upon the grass and my heart was vexed within me like as before. See, now Ezra was vexed in spirit. And I opened my mouth and began to talk before the Most High. So what is Ezra doing now? Praying. Praying. Isn't that angel telling him to do that? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And said, O Lord, thou that showest thyself unto us. O Lord, who showed ourselves unto us, meaning Israel. Israel. Was showed unto our fathers in the wilderness. In a place where no man treadeth. And a better place when they came out of Egypt. And thou spakest, saying, Hear me, O Israel, and mark my words, thou seed of Jacob. So Ezra saying this in his prayer to the Lord. For behold, I sow my law in you, and it shall bring fruit in you, and ye shall be honored in it forever. So the law will tell Israel. I'm going to also my law, my commandments in you, and you will be honored in the keeping of it forever. Because God's commandments is whose? Moses or his? God. I'm sorry, God. That's right. Because what did the Lord say? I will sow my law, see, mm. my law in you, mm. and it shall bring the fruit of righteousness from within you, Israel. But our fathers, which received the law, kept it not. So he's going into the history of Israel. Though we've got the commandments, the people, did we keep them? And observe not thy ordinances. And though the fruit of thy law did not perish. And though the fruit of thy law did not, did not perish, right? Neither could it. Why? For it was thine. No, it was Moses. It was thine. You see what Ezra's saying? Mm. So when Israel rise up, be like, see y'all dealing with the laws of Moses. They missing the point again. It's God's law. <laughs> right. It and it cannot what? God's commandments cannot what? Be done away with. Preacher Paulie and all them tell us God's commandments are done away with. Jesus Christ nailed them to the cross. What scripture is that? See, they're lying again. So we can still commit adultery, go after other gods, mm. break God's Sabbath. Mm. See? See how we've been lied to? Ezra know what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. Read on. So check it out. So we're yeah. at 33, right? Yep. Yeah. Yet they that received it perish. Yeah, yet they that received. So Israel, who received God's commandments, we what? Perish. Because they kept not the thing that was sold in them. Because they kept not God's commandments, which he sold in us. And lo, it is a custom. So watch what Ezra is saying. It's a custom. When the ground hath received seed. So you got the ground, right? And then you got the seed that goes in the ground. So the ground receives seed. So remember what Ezra is saying about Israel who received what? The law. The law. So the ground receives seed. And don't we see that as a custom? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? That's in front of our face. You go farming and you see the farmer out and plant seed in the earth. It says, or the sea a ship. So when you see it, look at the sea. Don't the sea receive ships? Yeah, the ships go on the sea, into the sea. Right. So he's talking about the reception of things. Go ahead. Or any vessel, meat or drink. Right. Don't vessels receive food and drink? 
Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. That big parent that that big parent wherein it was sold or cast into, uh -huh. that thing also which was sold or cast therein or received the parish. You see? So when well, you plant seed in the ground, it perishes, right? Seed disappears. Right? So you plant a ship in the sea, that ship will be destroyed. Or food and drink into any vessel. That gets gobbled up, right? Consumed. See, but you, but the, you got the vessel, you got the sea, you got the ground. It's still there. But the thing received is what gets consumed and done away with, right? Right. Read on. It says that the thing also which was sown or cast therein or received doth perish and remaineth not with us. But with us, but with us mean Israel. It hath not happened so. Right. It would be opposite with Israel, because what did Israel received the law. The law. But who would perish? We would. We would. Not, the, not law. the law which we receive. Right. I'm not done away with. You see. Read on. It says, "For we that have received the law, perish." By sin. You see, so what is sin? The breaking of what? God's law. There's another precept. Mm. You see? And our heart also, which hath received it. Read on. Notwithstanding, the law perisheth not, but remaineth in its force. Y'all see that? So did God's commandments perish? No. No. Never. We that received it perish. It's opposite with us. The sea ain't perish. The ground ain't perish. But a seed will. A ship will. The food will. Yeah. But God's law wouldn't. It would be in his force. So when Christ would come, what would he teach? God's commandments. That's deep, man. These are the prophets speaking to us. So let's read. So he's in prayer, right? It says, And when I spake these things in my heart, I looked back with my eyes, and upon the right side I saw a woman. So as Ezra speaking, what he just had spoken, he turned around, his right hand side, and who he see? An Israelite woman. That's what he's seeing. Mm. Go ahead. And behold, she mourned and wept with a loud voice and was much grieved in heart. She was what? Much grieved in heart. So what will I tell y'all to remember? What did the Lord compare Israel to? All the forsaken and grievance to. All right. So Ezra saying, oh, hold on. An Israelite sister. Vexed. Vexed, miserable, in a miserable state. Down and out. Read on. It says, and her clothes were rent, and she had ashes upon her head. So this sister was in misery, grieved in spirit, right? right. Lower state. Where is Ezra at? On earth. On earth, and where? In a field. In a field. Got to keep that going. <laughs> See, read on. Then let I my thoughts go that I was in. Yeah, so his vexation, he let that go. Because who are we going to deal with? Woman. This Israelite sister, because he sees her in a condition. And turned me unto her. And said unto her, Wherefore weepest thou? So he tells the sister, Why are you crying? Why art thou so grieved in thy mind? See, why are you so grieved in spirit? And she said unto me, Sir, let me alone, that I may be well myself, and add unto my sorrow. For I am so vexed in my mind, and brought very low. So this woman was brought where? Very, very low. low. A low estate. And a low condition. And I said unto her, What aileth thee? Tell me. 
She said unto me, I thy servant have been barren and had no child. So she's going into it how she was barren. She didn't have a child at first. Though I had a husband 30 years. See, I had a husband for 30 years. I was 30 years married, but I had no child. And those 30 years, I did nothing else day and night and every hour, but make my prayer to the highest. She said, I, I always pray to the most high in those 30 years, that time frame. After 30 years, God heard me, thine handmaid. Looked upon my misery, considered my trouble, and gave me a son. See? And I was very glad of him. So was my husband also, and all my neighbors, and we gave great honor unto the Almighty. And I nourished him with great travail. I nourished him with great travail, mean great labor. So when he grew up and came to the time that he should have a wife, I made a feast. So, so this was a time of joy. Right? Right. All the way up to his growth. Read on the 10th chapter. And so it came to pass that when my son was entered into his wedding chamber, he fell down and died. See that? So huh. Ezra seeing a woman who had a what? A son who grew up and eventually he fell down and died. So that would be a time of sorrow, right? It says, Then we all overthrew the lights, and all my neighbors rose up to comfort me. So I took my rest unto the second day at night. And it came to pass when they had all when they had all left off to comfort me, to the end I might be quiet. Then rose I up by night and fled. And came hither into this field as thou seest. Right. So where did she end up at? In the same field. Ezra. That, that field art up, right? <laughs> this is why I'm here. Because what happened to my son? He died. So I'm vexed. Right? Read on. It says... And I do now pur purpose not to return into the city. I'm not going back to the city. But here to stay. I'm going to stay right here in this field. And neither to eat nor drink, but continually to mourn and to fast until I die. Right. So what is fasting? Not eating, all right. Not so eating, see how it all link up? <laughs> see? Read on. Then left I the meditations wherein I was. So Ezra said, Then left I the meditations wherein I was. And spake to her in anger. See, Ezra vexed. What? He's speaking to her in anger. Saying, Thou foolish woman above all other, seest thou not our morning? See, he said, Look, sister. Because he's he, he dealing with an Israelite woman. You don't see what we going through as a people? And what happened unto us? You don't see what happened to our nation? How that Zion, our mother, is full of all heaviness and much humble, mourning very sore. You don't see what happened to Jerusalem? Mm. And now, seeing we are born and are sad, for we are all in heaviness, art thou grieved for one son? Are you grieved this way for one son, that to the point you want to die? For ask the earth. And so ask the earth. And she shall tell thee that it is she which ought to mourn for the fall of so many that grow upon her. So he's talking about ask the earth. You see how many people die on earth? Very. The earth should be mourning. For out of her came all at the first. So where did mankind come from? From the dust of the earth. That's right. We earthly. So we do not come from the water. Yeah, Israel teaches that man comes from the water. And we have in this book here, the Apocrypha. 
which is a part of the Bible, the 1611 of the King James Version. You can read in Genesis to tell you where man come from on the sixth day, the earth. And they claim they the prophets, false prophets. <laughs> read on. And out of her shall all others come. And behold, they walk almost all into destruction. And a multitude of them is utterly rooted out. Me out, rooted out of the earth. Who then should make more mourning than she? That I've lost so great a multitude. And not thou, which are sorry but for one. Yeah, you sorry for one child. But if thou sayest unto me, my lamentation is not like the earth, because I have lost the fruit of my womb, which I brought forth with pains and bear of sorrows. But the earth, not so, for the multitude present in it, according to the course of the earth, is gone as it came. Then say I unto thee, like as thou hast brought forth with labor, even so the earth also hath given her fruit, namely, Man. Namely who? Namely man. See, so man comes of the earth. Ever since the beginning <laughs> unto him that made her. See, so as we know about creation. Now therefore, keep thy sorrow to thyself and bear with a good courage that which hath befallen thee. For if thou shalt acknowledge the determination of God to be just. So if you acknowledge what happened to your son, and you acknowledge God's determination to be just. Mm. Thou shalt both receive thy son in time and shall be commended among women. See that? So what does we know about? Resurrection. Exactly. Because in the seventh chapter, right, wasn't he bringing out the resurrection? So they say, listen, if you acknowledge the determination of God to be just, you shall, sister, both receive thy son in time and shall be commended among the righteous women in Israel. You wouldn't be like a foolish woman. See that? This is how you know Ezra is dealing with who? An Israelite woman. <laughs> she came here another nation. Because he keeps talking about the he's talking about the resurrection. Us, he sent with us with Israel. See, read on. It says, Go thy way then into the city to thine husband. And she said unto me, That will I not do. She said, I'm not going back. I will not go into the city, but here will I die. So I proceeded to speak further unto her and said, Do not so, but be counseled by me. All right, see, I just said, Listen to the wisdom. Go back home to your husband. You're tripping. <laughs> Don't die here in this field. For how many are the adversities of Zion? See what he's talking about again? How many are the adversities and atrocities of Israel? Be comforted in regard of the sorrow of Jerusalem. See, so now as we're going to go into the atrocities, right, that befell Israel. For thou seest that our sanctuary is laid waste, our altar broken down, our temple destroyed. Sister, you see how our temple destroyed? The sanctuary is destroyed? Right? Are the altars broken down? You see that what, what's happened to our sister? Our psaltery is laid on the ground. Our song is put to silence. Our rejoicing is at an end. The light of our candlestick is put out. The ark of our covenant is spoiled. I mean, it's gone. Our holy things are defiled. And the name that is called upon us is almost profane. Our children are put to shame. Look at our children. They put to shame. Our priests are burnt. See, what was happening to the Levites? The nation was burning up. Levites, man. Who was there? The Babylonians, the Edomites. Nations did us in. Our Levites are gone into captivity. Our virgins are defiled. What was happening to our virgins? Great. That's right. See? So look at what the nations did to us, Israel. 
And they doing it to still yeah. today in their little laboratories. See? Yeah. Killing us. Our righteous men carried away. Our little ones destroyed. Our young men are brought in bondage and our strong men are become weak. And our strong men become weak. Mm. And which is the greatest of all? The seal of Zion. So you're talking about Zion. Hath now lost her honor. For she is delivered into the hands of them that hate us. Which is our enemies. So when you go to Luke, all the way to Luke 1, why is it still talking about in the Holy Spirit how the nations hate us? Because that's the business. That's the truth. You see? And a lot of this hatred that the so-called European, these nations have for us, our own people is pushing it out. So a lot of times you got the so-called European Edomite sit back. Right. Say, go ahead, you gangsters, kill right. each other. Sell dope to each other. Go ahead, so-called blacks and Hispanics hate on each other. We'll sit back. And you'll, you'll exemplify our hatred. <laughs> you see? Because Israel's supposed to be loving one another. So where are we getting this hate from? The hater brought hate. That's why we gangbang. You see? So the hate these nations have for us is all throughout the Bible. How do we be missing it? <laughs> Let's read. It says, and therefore, shake off thy great heaviness. See that? So we're telling the sister, shake yourself. Shake that heaviness off. And put away the multitude of sorrows, that the might may be merciful unto thee again. See? Shake your sorrow. Look, the Lord will give thee, bring back your child in the resurrection. And the highest shall give thee rest and ease from thy labor. And it came to pass, while I was talking with her, behold, her face upon a sudden shine exceedingly. So as he talked with the sister, now her face shines. It ain't just a little shine. It was a bright shine he tore her face. Because what's happening? She's starting to change her appearance. And her countenance glistered. And her countenance glistered. Sound familiar? Christ in the trans transfiguration. transfiguration. It says, so that I was afraid of her. So Ezra, afraid of her. Why? Because she is. She's changing on me. <laughs> Wouldn't you be afraid? Wow. Like, what the what the heck is this? <laughs> and you don't know what's going on. It's like sister he talking to and counseling, and mm. she's starting to glow and, and glister, right? So Ezra said, I was afraid of her. And muse what it might be. Say, what the <laughs> what is this? <laughs> And behold, suddenly she made a great cry, very fearful. See, then she did, this woman made a powerful cry that caused fear. So that the earth shook at the noise of the woman. See how powerful her cry was? With so the earth shook. And I looked, and behold, the woman appeared unto me no more. So what happened to the woman? She changed. He ain't seeing that woman he seen before. She changed. But there was what? It says, but there was a city built. So what did the woman change into? A city. <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> Remember she was grieved in spirit? Mm. Mm. <laughs> so is the most high dealing with Ezra on a high level? Man, a very high level. We getting to see this vision it Ezra was flipped. saying. You see? <laughs> That's why I was saying that. You see? Read on. It says, And a large place showed itself from the foundation. And a large place showed itself from the foundation. So where did Ezra see this city built it at? In the field. On earth. <laughs> Read on. Then was I afraid and cried with a loud voice and said, Where is Uriel the angel? That's how he said it. Where is Uriel the angel at? Who came unto me at the first 
For you have caused me to fall into many trances, and my end is turned into corruption, and my prayer to rebuke. And as I was speaking these words, behold, he came unto me and looked upon me. Remember what Uriel told him? Stay in the field. Don't fast. Pray to the Most High. I'll be back. Because you all know what the Most High is going to show Ezra. Mm. Ezra didn't know. They go to show you, man, the Most High be having the knowledge. And his son, Jesus Christ. They'll just give us a command. Do this, do that, right? Mm. We got to follow that. Because they know the deal. So let's read. We have verse 30. It says, And lo, I lay as one that had been dead, and my understanding was taken from me. As was out of it. And he took me by the right hand and comforted me and set me upon my feet and said unto me, What aileth thee? So you're like, What's wrong, brother? <laughs> and why art thou so disquieted? And why is thine understanding troubled and the thoughts of thine heart? He already know. And I said, because thou hast forsaken me, and yet I did according to thy words, and went into the field, and lo, I have seen and yet see that I am not able to express. And I've seen something in this field that I can't even express to you. You're here. And he said unto me, stand up manfully. And I will advise thee. Then said I, Speak on, my Lord, in me. Only forsake me not, lest I die frustrated of my hope. For I have seen that I knew not, and hear that I do not know. Or is my sense deceived? Is my sense deceived? Or my soul in a dream? Is my soul in a dream, Uriel? Now therefore I beseech thee. That thou will show thy servant of this vision. Show me what this vision means. What I've seen mean. What is this all about? He answered me then and said, Hear me, and I shall inform thee and tell thee wherefore thou art afraid. So Uriel going to break it down to what has was seen. For the highest will reveal many secret things unto thee. Hmm. Mm. He have seen that thy way is right. See, the most I have seen your way is righteous, Ezra. For that thou sorrowest continually for thy people. So who was Ezra sorrowing continually for? Israel. Israel. And make his great lamentation for Zion. And you make great lamentation for Zion. This, therefore, is the meaning of the vision which thou lately saw. So Ezra... Going to get the breakdown. See, the Bible break down itself. <laughs> thou sawest a woman mourning, and thou begettest to comfort her. But now seest thou the likeness of the woman no more. Yeah, because she changed, Ezra. But there appeared unto thee a city building. But there appeared unto thee a city building in this field. And whereas she told thee of the death of her son... This is the solution. I mean, this is the answer right here. This woman whom thou sawest is Zion. Who did who is one to represent the whole time? Zion. Zion. That's right. The, the See? Ezra thought he was talking to an actual Israelite woman. And it is, but it's not <laughs> what he was thinking. He turned into a city. That's right. So it says. This woman whom thou sawest is Zion, Ezra. And whereas she said unto thee, even she whom thou seest as a city built. As a city built. Who is that city? Huh? The elect of Israel. The elect of Israel. So Ezra getting to see the bride. Mm. Remember we read that in second, Ezra 7? <laughs> the bride of Christ. The elect of Israel. Whereas I say, she said unto thee that she hath been 30 years barren. Meaning without child. Those are the 30 years wherein there was no offering made in her. See, those are the 30 years wherein, meaning in her, there was no offering made in her. So we're going, what is that talking about? But after 30 years, Solomon built the city and offered offerings. 
and then bear the barren a son. You see, so when she was talking about she had a son, it represents the time when Solomon built the temple to the Most High, and we start offering offerings in Jerusalem. That's what the her bearing a son happened. We became a kingdom under who? Solomon. Solomon, right? <laughs> And what will happen? Will we will we grow to the top? Mm -hmm. Above the nations. Remember, she said her son what? He grew. grew. Yeah. This is when we grew as a kingdom. Read on. It says, and whereas she told thee that she nourished him with labor. And that where she told you that she nourished her son with great travail, with labor. That was the dwelling in Jerusalem. That's when we dwelt in Jerusalem as a kingdom. So it's telling us the breakdown itself. But whereas she said unto thee that my son coming into his marriage chamber happened to have a fall and died, this was the destruction that came to Jerusalem. So we became a kingdom. What happened? We got destroyed. We eventually fell and died. Perish. We got destroyed. That's the time of mourning. So what is it getting into? The fall and rise again of Israel. Of Israel that he left. The bride. And then they told her that in time she was getting her son back. To the resurrection. That's what Ezra was. He was right. He's talking about the resurrection, but he's not knowing. He's seeing the woman in a lower state. She's Israel, representing Israel. Right. Woman grieved in spirit, but he see eventually she changed <laughs> and became what a city, a city, glorious looking. That's that elect. <laughs> Read on, and behold. Thou sawest her likeness, and because she mourned for her son, and for her son who fell, thou beginnest to comfort her. And of these things which I have chanced, these are to be open unto thee. See, all this got open unto Ezra. Dang, that's what that means. Like the Lord opens us up. Not right See, now. I'll praise this. For now the Most High, see if that thou grieve unfeignedly, suffers from thy whole heart for her, so have he showed thee the brightness of her glory and the comeliness of her beauty. You see, he showed you because he, the Most High knew you was mourning for this sister. Change. But she, he, the Most High showed you her changing. You seen the brightness and her glory. Remember what John the Apostle seen? Right. That great city coming down with the glory of God. Right. All going together. You see? Read on. And therefore I bade thee remain in the field where no house was built. See, and therefore, as a this why I told you to go in that field where no house is at on the earth. Because the URL knew what was gonna happen. For I knew that the highest would show this unto thee. See that? Therefore I commanded thee to go into the field where no foundation of any building was. That's right. So Ezra would see the bride of Christ. He would see the elect, the kingdom of heaven that would be right here on earth. This was the vision. You understand? So go to Baruch real quick. Baruch. So the nations ain't in there as the bride. That woman represents Israel. Who eventually we fail as a people, right? right. And now we're we in a lower state, according to Deuteronomy 28. But what's to come? A kingdom. A king. God said that. No, that no, woman no, ain't no other nation. <laughs> <laughs> so we supposed to be standing up, man, happy. Right, ready. <laughs> you see, let Esau have his. This is his stuff. Let him glorify in his stuff. This place wicked. Mm. They, they love wickedness. That, this kingdom thrives off wickedness. They love trouble. Love it. They, 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 
they get their rocks off watching us kill each other, rob each other, act a fool. You see? They want our men to be with men. We're in the BET Awards, hat cutting up. Here's your rapper I gave. Look at him. And he kissing another guy. In his real face. What's his name? Uh, no something Nas, Lil Nas, oh, whatever. <laughs> Speed teach that we thought. Told you, it's been nasty and raunchy. They call it black entertainment. Okay. They killing us, man. These rich man's religions. Killing us. And we... Steady dousing money to them. Here. While they steady teaching us lies. They tell us we dumb because we got a, a primate's mind. Come on, man. <laughs> you said we got the mind of a monkey, but you, he, you smart. That's all this Marxism and Darwinism. All these dudes are Satanists. Sigmund Freud, Satan. And here go Israel. Yeah, see your it and your I. What's the it? See your it is. <laughs> you sound like Freud. You an extrovert or introvert? <laughs> Come on, man. <sighs> Baruch four. All praises. That whole chapter 10, we just pretty much the bride of Christ elected. There you go. Man. About our, our fall and our rise. But before we could rise, we would have to get that Holy Spirit. We would have to repent, Israel. That's what we're going here for. Baruch 4, 24. So Baruch is the scribe of Jeremiah. So as Jeremiah would speak God's words, Baruch would be right. He was cold. That means, the name means blessing. So you say, Barakata. Now you hear Israel, Barakata Yahweh, mean bless the Lord. It's just saying Baruch, Baruch, or Barak. It's mean bless. Barakata. Bless you. Barakatam. Bless them. <laughs> So, <laughs> so, Baruch 4 and 24. Right. It's Baruch 4 and 24. Like as now, the neighbors of Zion have seen your captivity. So these nations, they see us in captivity. They come out some Black Lives Matter, all this other foolishness. We in Israel, we think, and for many of us, we think we free. The Lord said, "You in captivity, Israel." But we got we got Joe Biden on our side, really. Mm -hmm. You in captivity, Israel. Mm. No, brother, Emancipation Proclamation. You in captivity, Israel. The Lord want His people that He let on top under Christ. <laughs> So these nations see us in captivity, but like they see us, go ahead. So shall so shall they see shortly your salvation from our God. So what's coming to the elect of Israel in God's time? Salvation. Our salvation is coming. That's the Christ. Read on. Which shall come upon you with great glory and brightness of the everlasting. See that? My children. Suffer patiently the wrath that has come upon you from God. So while we're in captivity, we got to just stay in the scriptures. Be long-suffering because God is patient. He's going to fulfill his prophecy. Because the Lord who brought the wrath upon us is the Lord going to get us out of this condition. It says, for thine enemy For thy what? Thine enemy. Have persecuted thee, but shortly thou shalt see his destruction, and shalt tread upon his neck. You see, so this kingdom gonna fall as we speak is falling. Wow! My delicate ones have gone rough ways. We the delicate ones of the Lord, 
and were taken away as a flock caught of the enemies. Be of good comfort, O oh my children, mm. and cry unto God. So we to pray to the Most High without ceasing. For ye shall be remembered of him that brought these things upon you. You see? So the Most High you know, he knows about his covenant. Mm -hmm. He ain't going to forget his covenant. He going to send the Christ back for us. Go ahead. For as it was your mind to go astray from God. See, so it was us, brothers and sisters, Israel. We, we went astray from the Most High going after the gods. Because sin starts in the mind. So as it was our mind to go astray from God, we got sheep that went astray. So being returned. So being returned. So as we're repenting. Seek him ten times more. You see that? That's getting into true repentance. As we return and the Lord bringing us in the body of Christ through his mercies, we supposed to truly be about repentance and changing that. Not being worldly. You see? Not drawn back to perdition. To perdition. Read on. For he that hath Brought these plagues upon you shall bring you everlasting joy again. Of what? With your salvation. See, he that brought these plagues upon you shall bring you everlasting. See, everlasting joy, what? Again. Again. With your <laughs> salvation. Upon Israel doing what, though? Repenting. That's the 28th verse, right? Seeking 10 times more. Yeah, we got to repent first before we get the kingdom. See why Peter and them was teaching what his teacher Christ told him to teach the gospel of repentance. When Israel get baptized in that water, that Holy Spirit. Because remember that what they asked him, would thou at this time in Acts 1 restore again the kingdom to Israel? All this goes. <laughs> we just don't know the time. The most high know the time. Israel going to that elect getting the kingdom. It's coming. And those of our people that want to remain in a, in a Sambo estate mm. and love this kingdom, they're going to pay the price. The ones that want to talk about, you're extrapolating and all this other stuff. That wisdom of Solomon 5 going to kick in. This is he that is counted among the saints. Man. We fools <laughs> thought we, that's when that's going to kick in. Let's do all that talking. Thinking they know. See? Trying to read the Bible in chronological order. The most high don't deal in chronological order. He'll take you forward, take you back, give you a one-liner. <laughs> and in other script means something totally different, see? But who would have the understanding? The apostles. So they'll go with one line and a verse and tell you what that line means. Best to understand it. You see, that's why you read Daniel too. You read it, that ain't in chronological order. You he take you back. Right? Mm -hmm. So we gotta understand how our God get down. Mm -hmm. Can't attack the Bible like a, a comic book, man. No. Lord be here, there, this how yeah, this yeah, how he yeah, deals. Yeah. See, he'll give a time frame. He'll say 42 months. He'll go, Israel. That means 42 months. he give a time frame. He'll say half a time, this a time, and 10 days. Yeah. Say, okay, that's the time period. So you safe at leaving it at that. <laughs> you know, Israel, they'll start counting. See, 1960. To 2019. That's Israel deliverance. And the Lord said, No, no. false prophet. See? Well, let's read. It says here we have Baruch chapter 4, verse 30. Take a good heart, O Jerusalem, for he that gave thee that name will come to All thee. praises. Miserable. Are they that afflicted thee? That's the nations, our enemy. And rejoice 
at thy fault. You see? So how are the nations when we fail? Happy. See? And then many of us, we happy in this condition. That's amazing. Yeah. Like, what's wrong with this brother, this sister? Bible go out, Israel piss. Where you want to be at? Out there in that world. See? Antichrist. So, from there, let's go to Ephesians 5. So we know what Paul talking about. We'll start wrapping it up. <laughs> I'll praise this. <laughs> See, we being God's side of the day, it's new moon. That's right. So this Ephesians 5, 22. So we know who the bride is now? Yes, sir. That's Israel. I see. See? <laughs> and the bride is also counted as the church. Right. So therefore, who would these Ephesians be whom Paul is talking to? Israelites. All right. And, 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 and they would be deemed the uncircumcision or Gentiles by those which is called the circumcision. This is all Israel. Who are the Corinthians? Israelites that Paul was teaching. Remember he, that he told the uh, Corinthians that I espouse you to Christ as a chaste go, version. Yeah, as a chaste version to Christ. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. See how it all go together? Well, for many of our people, they see Gentile, they think so-called European, Amish. It's the Amish. The Amish is the Edomites. <laughs> the Jewish is Edomites. I'm also the Amish. Hey, the people of the Lord. I'm Amish. Where is that in the Bible? We're the Latter-day Saints. No, you're not. You're not the saints. When you go to Psalms, it tell you, Psalm 148, 149, it tell you what the saints are. It tell you it's the elect of Israel. Daniel 7, it tell you who the saints are. The people of the Most High. So when Paul taught out of Ephesians, it says, y'all can't be in that fornication, uh, 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 being covetous, caught up in idolatry, as becometh saints. Right. Paul knows those scriptures. Criteria. <laughs> yeah, he knows who he told who the saints are. It's the elect of Israel. So this is Ephesians 5, mm -hmm. 22. So this is for our sisters. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. So here's the married sisters, right? So just as a married sister would submit herself unto the Lord, that's how she to submit herself unto her husband. Right? Because the husband is the one who will be teaching the righteousness of God, Christ. And in that, she's submitting herself through humility because there's a temptation for sisters not to submit to their husband, an Israelite man. There's a temptation in that. There's a temptation when it comes to honor father and mother. There's a temptation for children to be, I'm doing what I want to do. <laughs> There's a temptation going after other gods. You see? So wives, let's read it again. Submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. See, so the wives are supposed to see Christ in that man. You see? For the husband is the head of the wife. So Paul, through the Holy Spirit, is given the structure <laughs> in the Israelite home. The husband is the head. You see? Even as. Even as, just like. Christ is the head of the church. So who has the church? The Christ. Christ is our head. He's the one that sits at the right-hand side of the Father, schooling us through vessels. That's how it works. So 
the church starting with the man who we got to answer to. Christ. See, we got to, we can't be proud. We got to humble ourselves when we get taught how to cry. We got, oh, we got to do that. If we get taught by Christ, which we is, and we doing what we want to do, we acting proud. But then you want your woman to listen to you. When the brother can't listen to Christ. <laughs> we be having it backwards. And therefore you will have jacked up marriages. Filled with pride. Because the brother is not submitting to Christ. He want to do what he want to do. So therefore the wife out of order and the family is all jacked up. Not listening. <laughs> See? For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, not camp. And he is the savior of the body. And he, Christ, is the savior of what? The body. The body. The body of Christ. The church. So are we a church? We are. You see? Therefore... As the church is subject unto Christ. See how Paul is breaking it out and it's transparent and clear. Just as you see the church humbling themselves to the teachings of Christ. So let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. You see? So the wife, as she's getting taught and schooled in righteousness, the right doctrine, the apostles' doctrine, she has to submit herself to that. You see? So the husband got to learn them scriptures. The husband got to be about the wisdom. <laughs> Just like the wife got to be about the wisdom. That's how it works. <laughs> so let's read. So of course the wife is being subject to her husband in righteousness, not in evil things. Husbands, love your wives. See, so this is the new man. So husbands supposed to love their wives in righteousness, scripturally. How? Even as Christ also loved the church. So Christ is our standard. And gave himself for it. And gave himself what? For it. See, so did Christ die for a building? So the church is a people and that people is who the elect, the elect of Israel <laughs> there you go see how the comparison of the bride the church Christ and then marriage there's a reflection this was a great mystery Paul breaking down so he said I speak concerning Christ and the church read on that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. So who is cleansing the church, the bride? The Christ. It's Christ sitting at the right hand side of the Father. That's why we, the Lord be having us go on the topics. To give us the wisdom to cleanse, clean us up because what's coming that at the end of this? That marriage, the kingdom, that marriage feast. It's going to all make sense. <laughs> that bride is coming to them. It's going to be a lovely day. That's the marriage feast. Mm. See where we at? You have some of our people that don't want to be a part of it. That's dangerous. These are one be having spirits on them. They look to take you out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Satan knows what's promised. <laughs> See? So let's read. That he, not some brother, might sanctify and cleanse it, that's the church, with the washing of water by the word. That he might present it to himself. That he, Christ, might present it, the church, to what? Himself. A glorious church. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. But that it should be holy and without blemish. That it should be holy, that holy people, New Jerusalem, that city, without blemish, without spot. See, so that's why the Lord, he don't want his bride to be worldly. So just like in a marriage, 
man can't be all about worldliness, neither is wife. So he has a teacher. They want flesh. <laughs> See the makeup? So the church is a people. This man had told us the church is the building. Where y'all go to church at? Mm. <laughs> and you got the name on the thing. We the church. We the saints. How we ain't gonna wanna see each other? Mm. Now we forsaken to assemble. Something is wrong. You see? We putting off that worldliness is gonna be less problems, less troubles. <laughs> it's gonna be cool. We're gonna be chilling, man. We peaceful people, man. We'll be about friendship. That's another class. We're supposed to be peaceable, man. You get around brothers, they always argue. What's wrong with what's it's that works of the flesh coming out? Y'all see that? So there's a marriage to come. The bride. That's Israel. We got them scriptures, right? Them scriptures don't change. Right. Ephesians ain't changing Ezra and what Ezra's seeing. Uh, Ephesians go right with Ezra. Smack that. <laughs> Smack that. We in it, Israel. We in it. We gonna go through our stuff. Afflictions. That's because of sin. Going back from Adam. We get older. We pass on. But well, God's elect. Ain't going nowhere. This here dies in the earth. The spirit don't die. It goes back to the Father in the spiritual realm if you're at rest. The Lord make the new body. That's going to fit the kingdom. That's the bride. We're going to be cold, Israel, in the kingdom, right here on this earth with all the righteous. Wow. We ain't gonna think who ruled before it. <laughs> this is ours. So we just let them, the heathen do their thing. Esau's predictable. Let them do all this evil and all that. Yeah, we got another strand coming. Come on, keep the plan. <laughs> he let them name his hurricane, these hurricanes that in an uh, alphabetical form. <laughs> See? Hurricane Priscilla was after P in the next one. He named it. Right. <laughs> this, this oh, wow. dude is <laughs> play game. So plays game with the mind of our people. See, social media. Uh, what's that? Facebook. IG. All this foolishness, Israel. You're blocked. Israel, you could block, you could block yeah. people. Won't you block Satan? <laughs> you don't block Satan. You're blocked, but you www World Wide Web and put your information all out there. <laughs> block them. <laughs> Our people, man, we need we gotta repent, Israel. That what Brew was telling. Repent, and we'll get our that salvation again. See. That's what's up, man. We the people of God. Mm. Yeah? That's how we got to see each other. You see? And humble down. Say, man, we amongst the saints. People you never knew. Like, how I know, like, this brother and sister, they felt like they always been in my life. Mm. You gelling in the spirit. You see? That's what's up. So hopefully we was edified. All praises to Mosiah Christ for the for the lesson that was given unto us. Peace and blessings to all your homes. All right. All praises. Okay, we'll do the communion and fellowship. New moon, Lord Sabbath. That's right. <laughs> That's what's up. That's right. <laughs> they don't get it, brother. That's Take cold. the Lord to wake us up. Hey, my body, Most High in Christ, bless you. My sister and the children out there in Houston.
Miss Ruth Evans in Christ. Christ. Christ bless you. All right. It's your brother, your wife. Sign off. Let's see if anybody else on here. Yawachana, Most High in Christ, bless you, brother, and the fam. Look at that. My sister. That's what's up. Boston family. Most High in Christ, bless you. What's going on? So it's Hammer, brother. We got some market walk. Peace and blessings, brother. Most High in Christ, bless you. Sister Hannah. What you doing? Where Mr. Blunt at? Whoa, wait. Got to see my brother. Mafia. Peace and blessings. All right. Mm. You're walking on. Black power, brother. Black power. <laughs> <laughs> Say the vision he thought it was the uh, second address too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna surprise my brother. I was not what I was thinking. Right. <laughs> Man, I ain't gonna tell him in a minute. Ten, but I feel like a load that uh, ten and twenty-three has got Luke one. Oh, <laughs> crazy! Oh, lock it in, lock it in. Get it while it's hot. Another one. Explain the proper aspect of it. I just thought about it. It's an aspect called Christ's arrival. Yeah, the parable of the ten virgins. Yeah, yeah. We went through a lot of parables like that. Man, yeah. supper. All that wedding feast, man. It's great. Marriage of the land. Well, let's put us in mind where we at. That was their world. That woman.
Everybody ready? Are we good? All right. Heavenly Father, how will we ask that you bless the bread and the wine, which represents the body and blood shed of our Lord Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for the nation of Israel. In his name we pray and give thanks. Amen. 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 For the bride. Alright. Thank you, brother. Chill. <laughs> brother. <laughs> All right, my people. We're signing off. Peace and blessings to everyone's home. Shalom. That's it.